Um, I'm Charles Watkinson. I'm uh, past president of the Association of University Presses, and I'm here to talk to you about a project that's been jointly organized by the association, by uh, the Society for Scholarly Publishing and by SSP, and um, talking on behalf of my colleague Kate Heaney at SSP, Jackie Lord and Brenna McLaughlin and Amanda Whiting. Yep. So um, as we probably recognize, publishing has a reputation of being the accidental profession, one that uh, perhaps we stumbled into from uh, other career paths. Um, and that is uh, a benefit to us, and it's a, a wonderful thing. But uh, put yourself in the uh, shoes of a new person thinking about careers, not knowing an awful lot about publishing, not knowing a lot about other careers, and uh, how do we uh, actually help that person identify publishing as a promising career choice for them? Recognizing also, as Antonio Seymour said at the start of this conference, that the roles in publishing are more and more diverse, and we need more and more diverse perspectives in our industry. Think also of people mid-career and their needs to advance, um, uh, and the fact that uh, advancing in publishing doesn't necessarily mean advancing in one function of publishing and the opportunities to switch careers across uh, different functional areas. So the uh, idea of the accidental profession um, and our desire to bring more structure to publishing to improve equity and um, help uh, people advance in this the whole of their careers was the origin of our task force and the uh, task force for career progression has a number of initiatives. Um, our initiatives link very closely with uh, the Society for Scholarly Publishing's um, skills map initiative as well. Um, but the particular project I wanted to talk about here is something that we're hoping to present a little bit later this year. And it's to do with an analysis of position descriptions. So. Um, this is a skills based analysis. So what a team of volunteers has done over the last few months is they've analyzed a thousand position descriptions contributed by individuals, contributed by companies, contributed by um, uh, uh, executive search firms, um, and they've coded them according to a controlled taxonomy of skills produced by ONET, which is a federal US government initiative cross career. And our goals are to answer these questions. What skills do I need to enter this job function? What skills do I need to improve to advance in this job function? I have these skills, what position would fit me best? And we are designing an interactive dashboard. Firstly, I'd just like to talk about a very robust methodology that we put a lot of effort into um, producing with consultancy from labor economists. And you can see that it starts with the job descriptions, the raw job descriptions. Um, uh, there's human coding by experts in publishing that leads to um, uh, the uh, cleaned up data. And then there are a number of um, auto automated Python scripts that actually uh, validate the consistency of the coding. And this is leading to a public data set and visualizations and summaries coming this year. So, what does this look like in, per, in practice? So if I want to work in marketing, what skills should I have? And you can see here that um, data says, evidence says, writing, speaking, time management, coordination, social perceptiveness. So what's nice here is this anecdotally may be what you think, well, obviously, but this is data that says uh, what is useful. And there are a number of things that aren't so useful. And because this is ONET, these are things across the board from all careers, and they may not be too surprising. Like um, uh, uh, equipment maintenance is probably not that relevant for marketing people. If I want to advance in marketing, what skills do I need? So here, what you can see is you can see the way in which uh, skills are advancing. And I should explain that uh, what, you, what you're looking at here is um, uh, tier three is a lower tier than tier one. So tier one is a head of department, tier three is an early career person. 
So a tier three person really needs to advance um, in thinking about um, the management of financial resources, personnel resources, and material resources as they go up the um, as they go up the career. And of course, that is something where you can coach that person uh, and give them opportunities to show their um, uh, skills in those areas to help them advance. And finally, here's a situation where um, a new applicant. Uh, is thinking about particular um, skills that they have. Maybe they're very uh, confident speaking. Um, which area of uh, activity should they look for jobs in? Acquisitions and sales is um, an opportunity area for them. And of course, think about combining skills and then working out a skills um, a skills fingerprint that you can then run against this data set. So next steps, um, we'll be sharing the underlying data. Uh, we'll be publishing an article with the methodology, um, sharing top line information through a scholarly kitchen post. And we've also got a group of uh, visualization students at University of Michigan working on an interactive dashboard proof of concept. And we look forward to presenting at the AU presses and SSP meetings and getting uh, reactions and refinements. Please contact me with any questions. Thank you.